Welcome, friends, family, foes, everybody who is watching, because you are here at the right place at the right time. We're not talking about the Stephen Colbert show or the Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Ellen, or the Jimmy Trevor Noah who doesn't have a show. We're talking about the right show. Why is this show so fun? Because you can participate. I put you up on the screen. People are already getting involved. Look at Helen Tran. Hasn't been here in a minute, but threw in $50 in the Super Chat so we can kick off the year right. Thank you so much for doing that. And all my newcomers, a Super Chat is just a tip in the bucket. Your name gets highlighted in a color so I can see it much easier. And I try to catch you with a big thank you before it goes away. The more comments you put, the better. And click the like button because that is how we get more people to follow us. This is not a podcast. It's a support group for normal people. This is where you hide from big tech and the big university system, the big government, the big uh, corporate system that's telling you you have to put your pronouns and put your black square on. The, everything's got to be, you know, the way they do it in the movie uh, 1984. No, we are independent thinkers. Today, we're going to cover some important things. First of all, Biden hates on the entire world, then warns you about July 6th, then gets busted for hiding top secret documents. After that, Vice President Kawamala Harris lies about Kwanzaa, and we're going to end with three soccer players beating a hundred others in one game, and of course, some comedy clips. That's what we're doing right here, right now. Stick around. It is The Right Show, the support group for normal people. We got people all over the world watching this show. Hi from Brazil. Can anyone hide from big tech? Well, no, you can't, but we can say little private things like, How's everyone? Did everyone get your boosty boosty or did you decide not to boosty boost? You know, we talk like children because we are surfing underground, baby. Now, little roll call. YouTube subscribers haven't budged. Facebook is stuck and Instagram. But I took like three weeks off and a lot of you wrote me, what's going on? Are you still doing comedy? Yes, I just needed a social media break, but I'm back in better than ever. We're going to welcome you all. I want to tell you about some upcoming tour dates so that you can... Mark them in your calendar and force your friends to come to the shows. Take a look here. Albany, New York is next. Then Ontario, California. Then Turning Point is bringing me to Provo, Utah. This is a high school event, ages 12 and up. Okay, PG-13 show. So these three are huge. Then San Diego, Reno, San Jose, Tampa, and Arlington, Virginia. It continues on from there. But let's focus on the next three months first, shall we? Moving right along. Biden earns disrespect from the entire world for his elitism. Now, we all were told to hate Donald Trump when he said S-hole countries. He said some of these countries are S-holes. Well, the radical left says half of the states in America are S-holes. They call them flyover states. I'd never go to Nebraska. I'd never go to Arkansas. I'd never go to Alabama. Those are S-holes. But when the rumor was, which hasn't even been proven, that Trump called a couple of countries S-holes, Well, he was elitist and racist and needed to be impeached. Watch Joe Biden talk about other countries. I've traveled over 140 countries around the world. I'll paraphrase the phrase in my own neighborhood. The rest of the countries, the world's not a patch on our genes. If we do what we want to do, we need to do. Paraphrase the phrase in my own neighborhood. The rest of the countries, the world's not a patch on our genes. So Biden was raised completely racist and completely elitist. A a saying in his hometown was the rest of the world is not even a patch on our genes. If we if if uh, 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 if we do what we want to do. I don't even know what he's saying. Is, Is he saying we America can imply a lot of force on other countries and and rule the roost. Well, that's exactly an elitist mentality. Trump might have said, we're the best country by far the greatest. Nobody holds a candle to us. Oh my God, you're so elitist. America's not the best, okay? But now when Biden says it, crickets from the media. Biden is not with us anymore. He hasn't been for quite some time. And he tells us we should all be very concerned about July 6th, not January 6th, July. So mark your calendars, folks. It's coming up. If I can halt for a second and just say to you, 
The impact what happened on July the 6th had international repercussions beyond what I think any of you can fully understand. The impact what happened on July the 6th. On July the 6th. On July the 6th. On July the 6th. So the impact and what happened on July the 6th has impacts around the world. Now, I don't know what happened on July the 6th. I can't wait till he tells us next what happens on 7-11. That was also a very dangerous day in American history. You know, 7-11, you know, they come over here and a slurping machine. It's broken. Not a joke. Fix the slurping machine, man, with your Indian accent. Come on. Moving right along, Joe Biden and the media complained that Donald Trump, a former president, had top secret documents. Okay, who cares about documents? Pieces of paper sent between foreign leaders. The president is going to have top secret documents. But Trump gave them up. They were in Mar-a-Lago. And then they're like, impeach, impeach, put him in jail. We need to investigate. <laughs> Joe Biden talks about what should happen if a president has top secret documents documents. Oh yeah. Watch what he says. If any president has top secret documents. When you saw the photograph of the top secret documents laid out on the floor at Mar-a-Lago, what did you think to yourself looking at that image? How that could possibly happen? How one, anyone could be that irresponsible? How could it possibly happen? How could anyone be that irresponsible to have top secret documents. Well, I have news for Biden and all the CNN viewers. The president has the power to declassify any document with the wave of a hand, verbally, the stroke of a pen. So the president can have lots of top secret documents. You know who can't? Hillary Clinton, who bleach bitted hers when she had a subpoena, or a vice president. A vice president does not have the power to declassify or steal top secret documents but that's exactly what joe biden did take a look at the evidence oh this is blowing up in his face how could anyone be so irresponsible when my lawyers were clearing out my office at the university of pennsylvania they set up an office for me secure office in the capitol when i the four years after being vice president i was a professor at penn uh they found some documents in a box in a locked cabinet or at least a closet and as soon as they did they realized there were several classified documents in that box and they did what they should have done they immediately called the archives immediately called the archives turned them over to the archives and i was briefed about this discovery and surprised to learn that there were any government records that were taken there to that office but i don't know what's in the documents i've my lawyers have not suggested i ask what documents they were I've turned over the boxes, they've turned over the boxes to the archives, and we're cooperating fully, cooperating fully with the review, and which I hope will be finished soon, and uh, there'll be more detail at that time. The first question now, I forgot. Your uh, first question related to... I asked if we, uh, I asked if the... I'm only joking. Ha, 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 ha. I love how the press laughs and giggles with him and claps for him. He's trying, and you can see he, he's reading and going like this with his ear, which is how you can tell he's lying. It's a little poker tell. Men that play poker, women, they, they watch each other. They look for these little nonverbal cues. And there's another way you can tell when Joe Biden is lying. His lips are moving. No, nah, no. Nah, uh, uh, there was a closet or a uh, well, cabinet of some sort. But uh, I didn't know. Joe Biden has just said this. Let's not let him forget. When you saw the photograph of the top secret documents laid out on the floor at Mar-a-Lago, what did you think to yourself looking at that image? How that could possibly happen? How one, anyone could be that irresponsible? He is so irresponsible. But we cannot dwell on Joe Biden for the whole show. How boring. We expect him to be this stupid. If any other politician had one Joe Biden incident, it would be like front page. But it happens so regularly. I think this is one of Joe Biden's tactics. Do something stupid so often, so many times a day, that it doesn't even register anymore. Not a bad idea. We'll be back with a whole lot more The Right Show. The problem with losing Joe Biden as president is 
that Kamal Ho Harris would then become president. So they kind of got us in a checkmate scenario here, which is worse, hard to tell. I say rip the Band-Aid off. If we oust Biden and then Kamala steps up, we get to see her more. America will hate her more. She's gone next. But I can see the argument saying, no, don't do that, Kayvon. So here we have Kwanzaa Harris lying about celebrating Kwanzaa when she was a kid. Nobody buys it, do you? So you're telling me that Kamala Harris celebrated Kwanzaa as a little girl and had elders over when her mom is Indian and her dad is Jamaican. Growing up Kwanzaa was always a special time. We came together with generations of friends and family and neighbors. There were never enough chairs. If you're gonna lie, at least make it believable. So I wanna know in the comments right now, do you believe Camel Ho Harris spent Kwanzaa with the elders and they ran out of chairs growing up as a kid. This is the same woman who said she used to smoke weed while listening to Tupac and Biggie freshman year in the dorms. Then they discovered Tupac and Biggie's first album came out four years after she left college. This is the same woman who said she was in a little stroller and she was protesting with her parents. And they asked her, what do you want? And she looked up and said, freedom. And it turns out that was a story Martin Luther King Jr. told of a woman he met in Alabama and her baby in the 1950s. That's why we call her Kwanzaa Harris. Can't wait to see what you say in the comments. We'll be right back. We don't want to focus on garbage and negativity, a.k.a the Democrats for too long. So let's talk about a nice story. How about this? Three professional football players decided to take on 100 children in a little uh, scrimmage. And I want you to see who won. This is fantastic. And this shows you why. Women soccer players don't make the same amount as men's because this could have been 100 female soccer players. Same result. Check it out. That's what they do in South America when someone scores. Goal! Now, those soccer players took it really easy. They were just quietly batting the ball around. They could have blasted one of the balls into a kid. He would have flown into the goal with the ball. Just like a power move, like Haruken. They did not do that. That was very nice of them. This is what happens if you saved your Air Jordans for the last 40 years thinking, oh, they're going to be worth even more. Take a look at what happens to Air Jordans and how well they preserve themselves. You're not going to like this. So if you thought you're going to go on the court and play like Mike, no, you're going to bust an ankle. You're going to play like Derrick Rose, a trans Yale swimming star goes from being the best female swimmer to the worst male swimmer in America that quickly. It just goes to show you that there are biological differences no matter what the radical left says. So look at this little chubby thing. Uh, she was really good and brutish and she could beat the other girls, but not anymore. In Ivy League, All-American Swimmer went from pool shark to a scrub after identifying as a man and joining the men's team. This was the opposite of the switch made by Liar Thomas. I Nutsack Hennig, a senior on the Yale men's team, is now placing 79th out of 83 men. I chose to compete as my true trans self. I win less, but I live more. Well, you're about to get booted off the team. Hey, how about this? The city of bad ideas, a.k.a. San Francisco, decided that they have a new harebrained idea. They no longer want to show the mug shots of the criminals so that we don't start to create a bias against certain ethnicities. What does that mean? I'll explain. 
the San Francisco police have halted to release most mugshots in an effort to stop fueling racial bias. Publication of police booking photos vastly overstates the propensity of black and brown men to engage in criminal behavior. So this idiot here has decided that if we just don't look at the problem, we don't identify the problem, it goes away. Isn't that the San Francisco way? The reality is show who's doing the crime so we can know who to look out for. These criminals need to be put on blast and we can look at different communities and say, hey, what's going on in this community? But instead, we're going to ignore the problem in San Francisco. Ho! Very stupid. What do you think about that? I'll let you say in the comments. You have to order my new comedy special. We have to support comedy. So go to one of the live tour dates or order the new special, which is on my website, kvoncomedy.com, under the shop. And until we do, here is my latest dry bar comedy special post, which is actually doing really well. Lots of views online. Didn't want you to miss it. I teach men how to take the best, most seductive picture for the women in this room. Here's what you do, guys. Go home, get in the closet, and put all your clothes on. <laughs> your best clothes. Don't take anything off. Put on your dress shoes, dress socks, dress pants, belt, shirt, tie, suit coat, briefcase. Make it look like you're going to work. <laughs> If you really want to turn her on, let your 401k dangle out of the front of the briefcase. Just ever so. Just a little tip. All right. So there you have it. You just got to laugh a little bit. Now, remember, leftists pretend that by ignoring a problem, it magically goes away. We know better because we are telling truth through comedy. This is Waking America Up with Laughter. Tell your friends to tune in each and every week. I'm going to go back and watch the replay make sure the pixelation goes away. We post this as a podcast every Sunday. We're going to go hang out on Locals right after this, so be there, caveoncomedy.locals.com. And if you want to join my email newsletter list, I saw some people saying, you're going to be down the street from me in February. I am going to be in San Diego in February. Hope to see you at the show. Enjoy the rest of your night. Give this podcast five stars and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Yes. <laughs>